All right. So today we're going to touch base on a couple things and learning how to use Photoshop. Photoshop is a image processor. Adobe has on their website. Reimagine reality. If you can think it, you can make it with Photoshop CC, the world's best imaging and design app. Create and enhance photographs, illustrations, and 3D artwork. Design websites and mobile apps. Edit video, simulate real life paintings, and more. It's everything you need to make and any idea real. Okay, so let's jump into it. All right, so when you first open up Photoshop, you're open to this new window here. This is a different interface. This is Photoshop 2018 on Adobe CC. So the first thing you wanna do is open up file, new, and you're given a few options here. So I have some recent things because I actively use Photoshop as I am a graphic designer, but you have a couple templates up top as far as your canvas and I'll explain what your canvas means. So really quickly, I'll explain a couple things as to what these numbers here mean on the side and what pixels per inch color mode mean as well. So say I want to create a paper to print, right? Those regular paper printed papers that go inside your printers. Right. Um, they're eight and a half by 11 at 300 PPI. Now you see this pixels per inch pixels divided by inch PPI here. I'll explain what that means. Um, so my width of my paper, you can choose depending on where you're from. You can choose centimeters, millimeters, points, picas, uh, and pixels. Uh, so let's go with inches here and eight and a half by 11 is what I'm, you know, want to use. And I want to put a paper that is horizontal. So you can change the orientation right here. Uh, and also the use of artboard, which is a new tool brought into Photoshop 2018 Adobe CC. And you can adjust the resolution, any kind of graphics for screens, whether they be on the phone, computer, their resolution is for the most part, 72 uh, pixels per inch. So PPI, uh, printers print at 300 pixels per inch um some range i think they're at a little below that maybe 290 something or 260 something or something like that but typically if you're going to use for print you put 300 pixels per inch for the best maximum quality so you're going to use these graphics for a t-shirt um on paper and you have the best quality you're going to put 300. your color mode this matters as well. Your RGB color mode is what your eye sees through uh, as your main colors and also what your screens which you have in your phone and also on laptops and computer monitors. Uh, they're in RGB, which stand for red, green, and blue. Grayscale, bitmap, CMYK, that's for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, which is black, and lab color. Now we're gonna use this to print. Uh, actually, no, I, I wanna do something for screen. So I'm just gonna put an RGB and maybe let's put 72. Uh, and create. So depending on what resolution you use, it can also slow down or speed up your workflow as far as the toolbars um, and what's on your screen. So file, settings, image, layers, type, select filters. I'm not gonna go in depth because it's a very large program. Um, just get an understanding of what you can do in here. Change your image size, adjustments, auto tones, uh, edit. And these are called uh, destructive editing. Uh, when some of these adjustments that you may add here. Edit, uh, warp, uh, do spell checks, which is very, very important. I didn't learn this until six or seven, six or seven years into my craft, knowing graphic design. And I know that I had a spell check. Here we have uh, filters. You can play around some filters. Quick filter gallery. Probably have seen these settings before. Everybody knows the stylized glowing edges. I don't have any brush strokes on here, so you can't really see how it looks, but we've all probably seen these before. So on the left side toolbar, you have V to move uh, any images you may have here. So let's say I put a square and this is my rectangle, round rectangle, ellipse, polygon, line, many different things here in my toolbars. If I open up another layer, and I'm gonna move this fairly quickly. So if I move another layer, draw at a square, holding down shift and left click drag, keep the same resolution, same dimensions. And then I press V, which will give me this move tool, right? I'm able to move around the square. Now shortcuts do range per program, but we'll get into that in later videos. All right, now we have the lasso tool. You all know how 
someone asks you, can you crop this picture off of me? It's annoying. It's very annoying. There's marquee tool you can use, another selection tool, elliptical marquee tools, single row marquee tools, column marquee tools, and you can move these around to basically set up selections. Moving forward with the ink dropper, I can draw it another box. Let's say I want it in blue. I can change the fill color up here up top and change these colors. And now I have a scion kind of bluish color. Here and I use my ink dropper tool. And I select this color. You see this color selection tool pops up and you can see your currently selected color at the top and your previously selected color in the bottom. So let's say I wanna use this blue color. I press B for brush or I can press the brush tool here. You can also left click and hold to see what some of these options bring up. But the brush tool is right here and I can draw in another layer and I can draw out whatever I want. Just holding down left click. All right, there works control Z to undo. This is a very similar uh, setting or tool, shortcut rather. So a very similar shortcut that you can use in other programs. Control Z is to undo. Control C is to copy. Control V to paste. So we're going down on these tools. There's the clone stamp tool. So you can select something previously done. Create a bunch of layers here for brush strokes. Don't mind me. And with these two tools here, uh, spot healing. We're not going to go too in depth into uh, the patch tool. I can select portions of this and I can move it around this selection and different things can happen. So do you see this blurring effect that happened here? I zoomed in holding alt and scroll and a blurring happened here. The reason why that happened was because these tools here are used to move certain parts of, let's say, a pattern or a picture. Um, and I can bring in a picture here. And I'm going to bring in a picture. So we're going to find a, a nice wallpaper. Googling on my other monitor. We're going to copy this and paste it in here. So and enlarge this on the corners. There we go. Now, if I want to use this uh, patch tool, I can select the rim. I can drag this, holding on the left click and drag. And what it does is it replaces my selection with something that I moved it to in my new selection. So we're going to undo that. And these all have their own different kind of effects um, or basically similar style of selecting, dragging. And adjusting of what they do so I can copy this basketball rim and it'll place it there while trying to calculate Photoshop will try to calculate what is going to be filled in here so a sky moving down here we have the bucket tool paint bucket so you can pick a color paint I can fill up spots all right you have the smudge tool I can change the smudge brush I have a bunch of brushes thank you to Kyle's brushes I'll put that in the link below um, and you can select different uh, brushes here and you can drag these, smudge a picture. So depending on what you want to do, you can adjust this smudge. Let's say I want to make these, um, some of these stars uh, change. Smudge tool, which is like a finger. And I'm going to hold down Alt and right click and drag to adjust the size of my brush. And I want to smudge all these stars here do something really odd so careful what you're doing on edges because you can smudge away the edge all right so we're gonna undo this now once again using all these tools can dramatically change and increase your workflow um, when working in Photoshop uh, so coming along here with the dodge tool dodge burn and sponge these tools if you've ever done any kind of photography they come from that so so what you can do is you can make these parts lighter. A little bit of effect. This is this is me uh, dodging. Me, this is like regular photo. Dodging, regular, dodging, regular, dodging, regular. All right, and then going towards the burn tool, and as you can guess it, yes, makes things darker. So once again, using these tools, you can make your photos much different. You can make this 
whole part darker, make things more dramatic, and just burn these uh, parts. But careful when adding these effects, um, they can really do damaging things to your photos because it's called destructive editing. You cannot go back after a certain point. This is like permanent in a sense, aside from this undo tool. Now the uh, direct selection tool and the path selection tool. So this is just selecting portion of things, I guess, in your picture uh, or your canvas rather. So when I use it, I can select whatever I put here and I can see what these things are. And there are my boxes that are underneath that picture. And this is the hand tool. So when you see me move around, I'm holding down the space bar and I'm left click dragging, or you can press H and you can do the same. Now, when you're all the way zoomed out, you can't do that because you're seeing the entire image. But when you're zoomed in, you can do this to make small changes and adjustments by holding down the mouse button or the space button and the hand tool here. All right, and the zoom tool is what I'm doing. I'm pressing Z and left clicking and dragging. That's the shortcut for this here magnifying tool or zoom tool. You can zoom out by going to the left and zoom in by going to the right. On the left side in our color selection tool, you can click it, a pop up a menu, change your color picker for your foreground color, which is the color your first color. Press OK. Now we're painting in blue. Or we can change that color by pressing Shift X and changing from white to blue. And I can color in white, Shift X, color in blue, Shift X, color in white, etc. etc. Cetera, et cetera. All right. Now to, conti to continuously undo, like I just did, press Control Alt Z Z Z, and then you can undo as far as you possibly can, or as far as you have in your settings in Photoshop. Now those can be changed inside your file. Actually, Edit Preferences, and you can go to your interface and change those keybinds in there. All right, now to the right side. We have much more inside windows. So there's a bunch of things here you can change. In your actions bar, or your action settings, you can set up certain macros or keybinds that you can set up. You know, if you want to press Shift F7 um, and make it do something, make your picture look chroma, um, or any kind of setting. So you can press the record button and you can record a setting or some or action or a list of actions, then press stop and then play, and you can make that automatically happen. So if you want to speed up your workflow and you want to edit a bunch of pictures, you can do all of that using the action uh, key or use a program that Adobe has by the name of Lightroom. And that is a photo editing program that Adobe offers through the Adobe CC software. There are a couple other things here on our right side, windows, workspace, essentials turned on. Um, you can change your brush settings here. Play around with the shape dynamic scattering. You can change texture, change the scale of a brush. You can do dual brush. You can duplicate the, you can add another brush there and duplicate it. Um, your color dynamics, how your color interacts with the previous color, several other things. Transfer allows you to change the opacity and pattern. Uh, the opacity pattern that you're using you can use a brush pose which acts as a pseudo pose for your brushes or affects the brushes pose um, while using a Wacom tablet and a Wacom pen you can add noise you can add wet edges and you can see this in the little viewer underneath the brush settings to see how it affects your brushes smoothing and protect texture and these are all your brushes. These are my current brushes that I downloaded. And we're gonna put this off to the side. Now, sometimes people do use um, Photoshop for text and creating advertisements as such. So we're gonna type out Sean. I have a text layer, it's here in T. And I press T to create a text layer. So you can either tap it once or you can click and drag to create a text box. So everything that you do type stays in that text box. We're gonna delete this, pressing backspace. And I wanna select this uh, Sean layer, press Control T, 
a Windows user, so sorry Apple. You can press left click, drag, enter, and I can adjust the size. I press Ctrl T again to change it, and I press Shift, left click, and I click outside to see this uh, arrow outside. It's kind of curved. I can change the rotation, right? I want to put it sideways. And I want to press Ctrl again, left click, and drag. It's just a habit for me to get out of the um, Ctrl T uh, window or setting. Okay, so I have Sean here on the side. So now one thing I can do is I can adjust some of this text here in the paragraph by pressing left align. So that's right rag and center. This is right align left uh, rag. Um, here we go. I want it centered. You can change the indentation, um, all indentation, etc. Window. Oh, one thing about Photoshop is it's not a word processor. So it's not made to handle um, the zillions amounts of text. Um, programs like InDesign are much better for that, and I will have that video later on in this series. Um, and so you can edit text here in characters, and you can change the settings. So I have a bunch of fonts. You can download that at uh, Defont, and I'll have that link down in the description below. So I'll put Cafe Nero. I'll change the font size here, but it's a 48. Let's try 148. This is all testing um, and play around with a bunch of things and experiment with this. And let's say I'm finally happy with this, all right? All right. Here to the side. Okay. So once you have a text layer or any kind of layer, you can adjust a lot of options here in the layer style. Um, so your blending options are here. So multiply, color burn, linear burn. You can scroll through these and you can see what they do. This is often what I do in my workflow and I can change that um, at any point in time. Any if I don't like it, but I just had looked really nice though. So we're gonna put on overlay and I wanna click on the layer option here, layer style. And I can change some of these settings here. So. There's bevel and emboss, which gives it a kind of popped up look. Inner shadow, which is exactly what it says. It's an inner shadow. You can change the opacity and it has an inner shadow. So we're going to have it here at 100. I can take this off, put an inner glow. That in color overlay. Layer styles in general do not think about blending options. So in far as a hierarchy, um, layer styles go before over or blending options. Then you have the gradient overlay, pattern overlay, outer glow, drop shadow. They all kind of have their own things, but combined you can make some nice and beautiful effects. Okay. Now let's get into adjustments and libraries. Adjustments have a lot of things that are non-destructive editing. So difference between destructive editing is that what you're doing is permanent and destroying the image. What non-destructive editing is, you can add options currently at the current time and then later on, if you're not happy with them, you can adjust them and change them. So say I wanna change the hue and saturation of everything below. I can drag this layer here in hue and I can change how it looks before but careful how your colors pop out. Say I'm happy with this because this changes the overall look of every layer underneath. Unless I want to only affect the layer underneath my current layer or my adjustment layer, I can hold down Alt and left click. Then it only affects that current layer. Alt and left click again will get rid of that adjustment layer only affecting the layer underneath it. So now it affects everything underneath it. I want to change this hue to say around here where green reduce the saturation or increase it and I increase it by about three. We're happy here. And then maybe lower the, or increase the lightness. Six. All right. It looks a little horrible, but for the sake of this tutorial, um, on how to use Photoshop, I think it'll do. Layer masks basically can show or take out what a adjustment layer has or what a previous color has or what a layer has. So what I mean by that is if you add a layer mask on a picture or let's say on the text and I press B to bring up my brush tool, 
and I put the original colors here, my default foreground and background colors. And I use black. I hold alt right click to adjust my brush size. I can get rid of some of the text. Now don't worry, it's not permanent. I can always get rid of this adjustment layer by pressing the change color to, from black to white. So white shows your layer again, just paint it over and then black removes it. So similar to the style, similar to what photography is. The whole taking and showing of light using black and white or revealing it by painting it in a white. So this is some things or some tools that you can use to do non-destructive editing. All right, guys, I think that wraps up basically the essence of what Photoshop is and what Photoshop can do. There's many, many, many and many more uh, things that Photoshop can do, but this wraps it up for today's episode. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys are checking out the video. If you have any techniques or any kind of tips for anybody using Photoshop that I may have left out or you may know, please talk about it inside the comment section below and connect, like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you guys check out these next couple videos explaining more programs inside Adobe CC.